Last night we told you about Marty Rathbone, a 27-year member and one of the highest-ranking leaders of the Church of Scientology. He left in 2005, but says that while he was there, the head of the church, David Miscavige, routinely beat other high-ranking members of the church. Rathbone said not only did Miscavige brutally kick, punch, and choke members of the church's international management team, the Sea Organization, in particular Mike Rinder, the church's former spokesman, he also says Miscavige encouraged a corporate culture in which other managers were expected to get physical. Rathbun admits he himself assaulted subordinates, but says it was done with the encouragement of David Miscavige himself. As for the church, it vigorously denies their claims, asserting that Rathbun is a bald-faced liar who was fired because he himself assaulted members of the church, or at least demoted. And tonight, as we continue our investigation, you'll hear from other high-ranking Scientologists saying that David Miscavige was the one behind the violence, although the church emphatically denies it. Miscavige was always threats bullying, haranguing people, uh, verbal abuse, physical abuse. That was his game. He's, he is a bully. Jeff Hawkins was a Scientologist for 35 years. A marketing director for the church, he was a member of the Sea Organization, the group that runs church operations worldwide. He had dedicated his life to Scientology. A true believer, he earned just $50 a week and lived in church-provided communal housing with other Sea Org members in California. You've worked with Marty Rathbone, you've worked with Mike Rinder. The church told us that they were the ones leading uh, this reign of terror, that, that, that Marty was the one responsible for, for these beatings. Absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. David Miscavige was the one leading this whole physical violence kick, and it was him who was beating people up. Hawkins, who left in 2005, says Miscavige attacked him several times including once during a marketing meeting. He jumped up on the conference room table, like with his feet right on the conference room table, launched himself across the table at me, I was standing, battered my face, and then shoved me down on the floor. Tom DeVock was a construction manager for the church. He was only 12 years old when he joined. He left in 2005 because he says he could no longer accept Miscavige's violence. Dave asked me a question, and I couldn't tell you what the question is today. I don't remember. But the next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down on the ground in front of all these people. This is the Pope, you know, knocking me down on the ground. Amy Scobie, a Scientologist for 27 years, helped run the Celebrity Center in Los Angeles, designed to cater to the needs of famous members like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. She says she also left in 2005, but distinctly remembers watching David Miscavige choke Mike Rinder, the church spokesman at the time. He grabs Mike around the neck, swings around, and is choking him, and he's holding his neck. And, and Mike's just like grabbing the side of his chair and like struggling, like w not knowing what was going on. And um, his face is turning red, and, um, and, and the veins are popping in his neck. And I'm going, what in the hell is going on? Steve Hall was a writer for the church who left in 2004. He says he saw Miscavige attack Mike Rinder again in November of 2003. He grabs Mike, Mike's head with both his hands, throws Mike off his feet because he's strong, and he put his whole body into this. He smashed Mike's head against this cherry wood uh, Wall. Church of Scientology spokesman Tommy Davis insists that all these former Scientologists are liars, bitter former Sea Organization members who were demoted from their positions by David Miscavige. He says Mike Rinder was asked about rumors of abuse two years ago by the BBC when he was still spokesman for the church. He had been asked these same allegations and uh, one of his responses was, uh, I'll tell you what, if you come up with that again and show up with another one of those crap allegations, I'm going to file a complaint. He's talking about this BBC interview in 2007, recorded by Scientologists and posted on YouTube just before Mike Rinder left the church. He says, what you do with Debbie you find an absolute you down anonymous, the that's absolute rubbish, 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 not true, rubbish. But now that Mike Rinder is no longer working for David Miscavige, he says he was lying during that interview. He wouldn't appear on camera, but he told us that he was physically assaulted by David Miscavige some 50 times. He lied to the BBC, he says, because he didn't want to lose his career and his church. That doesn't surprise Jeff Hawkins, 
who says when he was in the church, he would have never spoken against Miscavige. If you want to stay in the church, you have to do what he says. That's right. That's right. He literally holds, if, you if you're a, a, a Scientologist and you believe in Scientology, and you believe that the only way to your spiritual salvation is through the levels of Scientology, then he literally holds the power of life and death over every Scientologist, because he can say, you're out of here. You, you will get no, no more Scientology services. You're done. The church says Hawkins is out to destroy Scientology, adding that he supports an anti-Scientology movement called Anonymous that actively protests the church. These are individuals who have proven not only that they will lie, but that they will get other people to lie. It's not much of a stretch for them to all get together, corroborate their stories, find some other people who've left years ago to try and corroborate it even more, and then come to the news media and attack the very person who removed them. The church provided us with dozens of affidavits from current and former church members, one-time colleagues of these former Scientologists, even their ex-wives. All these affidavits swear David Miscavige never hurt anyone. I slept with Tom DeVock for almost 20 years. I knew every inch of him. I never saw one scratch. I never saw one bruise. I never saw one black eye, nothing. Nor did he complain about anything personally. That's Tom DeVock's ex-wife, Jenny Linson. She agreed just this week to be interviewed along with the ex-wives of Mark Rathbun, Jeff Hawkins, and Mike Rinder. Mike Rinder's ex-wife, Catherine Bernardini, says he was never assaulted by David Miscavige. I know every square inch of Mike Rinder's body. I know everything that's ever happened to him, every accident, every time he broke his wrist. I, I've been with him. We've been together all our lives. It's utterly ridiculous, and it isn't true. And you were married to, to Marty Rathbun? Fifteen years. I know the man better than anybody else. Now, you've got to understand, Marty Rathbun is a liar. He never mentioned it, okay? He says that he did mention it to you. No, he did not. Absolutely not. It's a lie. Catherine, your ex-husband, Jeff Hawkins, says about you that you have a heart of gold and that you're a good woman and that you stuck with him through some very trying times in Scientology. He does say that, that you were concerned... Whoa, hold on. He didn't have any trying times in Scientology. I don't... It was the best time of his life. She says Jeff Hawkins never said a thing to her about being hit. Did you tell anybody about this? I mean, did you complain about it? No. No, no. You don't do that. When you're inside the base, you don't do that. Why? Well, uh, if you go against Miscavige, if you say anything against Miscavige, or you do anything, or you report on Miscavige, you're instantly off the base. And what does that mean to be off the base? It means you're on the rehabilitation project force, or you're sent to a remote location, or you're sent to Africa or Australia. You're just gotten rid of. Marty Rathbun says he did tell his wife but never complained to anyone else about Miscavige. He had the power to say, you're, you're excommunicated and you'll never see Scientology again. You'll never see your wife again. You'll never see Scientology again. I mean, you've devoted 27 years to it, and this guy could pull the plug just like that and say, you can't ever have it again. Tomorrow, what Marty Rathbun says happens to those who leave the church and speak out. Just a note for you, after last night's report, we again extended an invitation to Church of Scientology Chairman of the Board, David Miscavige, to appear on 360 for the series. We pointed out that through his spokesman, Miscavige had declined to respond to the charges himself. Well, today, CNN received this letter from a Scientology lawyer asserting that was flatly untrue and asking us not to say that again. So we just want to set the record straight. We'd like to play a portion of our interview with church spokesman Tommy Davis from last July. And Why not Davis allow David Miscavige to speak? I mean, he's... Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> well, he speaks for himself very well. <laughs> but why not have uh, have him do an interview or address these charges directly? Oh, it's not worth his time. I mean, he's the ecclesiastical leader of the church. This is a global religion. You have people that he personally removed who are making these kinds of outrageous allegations. Not in a million years would he respond to something like that. Well, so to be clear, our invitation is still open. We'd love to have Mr. David Miscavige on 360 any time. Over at ac360.com, you'll find a posting I wrote about why we're doing this series in the first place. And while you're there, you can also watch last night's report. Coming up, the crisis in Haiti. By the way, we'll have more tomorrow and all this week.